Ladles and Jelly Spoons, welcome back to Badger Works. Today, this. Uh, this is the um, Heinkel HE162 Salamander uh, in 170 second scale from Hobby Boss. And uh, I've actually got, uh, actually got two of these. <laughs> um, which for reasons that will become apparent in the, in the future. Um, but anyway, so I'm actually going to be building two of these at the same time, but obviously I'll only show you one, there's no point showing you both because they're both identical. Um, and yeah, these are going to go on a diorama that I've been working on, uh, which will become revealed and will become apparent in the, in the not too dim and distant future. And so that's why I've bought two of them. So yeah. That's what we're going to build today. So, let's get on with it. So, let's have a look in the box first. I, I did already have a quick look in the box here, and the thing that got me when I opened the box is this thing is tiny. Uh, the kit. I mean, it's it's 170. It says quite clearly on the box it's 170 second scale. And I did. I thought to myself, they've made a mistake with this. It's too small. It's absolutely minute. Um, so, I, I went and checked... Uh, on Wikipedia, and uh, just to do a comparison, and I think this is actually correct because the wingspan on this uh, is uh, the real one is 23 feet. Uh, the wingspan on, say, uh, a, a Messerschmitt 262 is 40 something feet. So this thing is literally half the size of a 262, um, and like half the size of a you know like a Spitfire or something. It's tiny. So, yeah, hopefully it is right. But anyway, that's, that's beside the point. Um, now, this is a really interesting layout, what they've got here in the box, because they've got all the frames are all in their own little pockets in this plastic tray. More plastic, yay. Um, and it is very, very simple. So, the whole front half of the fuselage and the cockpit is one piece. Uh, the wings and the rear of the fuselage are one piece. Um... And then you've got another frame here with a few, with like the, the engines and bits and pieces on. And then another frame for the, for the cockpit glass. Um, so that's all fine. It will actually work for what we're going to do. I mean, it's, you know, um, not the end of the world. So let's take this out for a second. Uh, it has a decal sheet. It actually has two quite interesting schemes because there's a German one and there's a Russian one. Uh, and I think it's actually, yeah. So there's the uh, the layout for the for the decals, and it's um, so you've got a German scheme here, and then obviously the the Russians captured some, painted them up in their colours, and uh, yeah, and away they went. So uh, yeah, there's there's a Russian colour scheme which is quite interesting. Um, but uh, yeah, so the instructions are all right, not too bad. Um, <laughs> it's literally like <laughs> there's two steps that's it it's like yeah here's some bits put them together um i think the one thing that's going to be possibly interesting is that i want to have the undercarriage up whereas this is obviously designed to have the undercarriage down so i think we're gonna have to make some modifications but uh that's not the end of the world um and the other problem that we have is because I want to display it in flight, there's no pilot. The cockpit is very, very basic. So I think what I might do, and I think I can get away with it, is I might spray the inside of the canopy black and make it look like um, tinted glass. But uh, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Anyway, let's, uh, let's get on with it. So um, this is quite an interesting uh, setup here because it's basically a case of taking almost every part off of the frame uh, to begin with. Um, one of the things I have found almost immediately with this is there are quite a lot of nasty seam lines that are going to have to be dealt with. Um, I mean, it's like here on the side of the fuselage, for example, there's a really nasty seam line there. I mean, considering this is a fairly new kit, um, there's going to be quite a lot of seam lines to deal with, but that's fine. We'll clean all those up and then um, and then get on with it. So we'll do that first. Um, so once all that's cleaned up, I can start putting the uh, undercarriage together. Now, as I mentioned, I want to show the undercarriage up on this. So uh, what I'm actually doing is cutting off the uh, the tabs 
that uh, fit them in place and just making some very minor modifications um, to make them fit in this closed position and then using the cut off bits of the uh, of the uh, undercarriage flaps to uh, fill in the holes <laughs> so it actually works quite well so and the same uh, with the front uh, same thing again it's uh, there are some fairly nasty gaps but we can deal with those later it's not the end of the world yeah, it's the same um, deal as before. It's basically uh, just filling in the gaps using the uh, the bits that I've cut off to uh, good effect. And then we'll put some filler on it later. Um, once that's all dry, I'm using a, a sanding sponge here. It's quite an aggressive sanding sponge. It's a, like a 220 grit or something like that. And uh, just flattening everything out to um, get everything level and then uh, any gaps that are remaining we can uh, we can fill in afterwards really just to um, give us a head start as it were when it comes to fitting everything together and, and uh, getting rid of some of these <laughs> rather nasty gaps but yeah we'll deal with that in a moment and to deal with said gaps we're going to turn to our old friend uh, Mr Dissolved Putty uh, this really is very useful stuff for um, for this kind of work i mean there's obviously all kinds of different putties you can use but i i like using this stuff it's uh, it's so easy to use just put it on with a brush um just you know dob it on to to fill in the the holes and whatnot and then uh there's a little trick that i've showed you before but it never hurts to repeat it that um basically put the stuff on leave it for about 15 20 minutes let it set up a little bit and then there's a, a nice little trick to uh, to make it smooth. And that's basically to take a cotton bud with some uh, isopropyl alcohol on it and um, just rub it over the surface. And what it does is it removes any excess, smooths out the remaining um, filler, and you don't have to sand anything. <laughs> it makes life so simple. It's, it's a great way of dealing with it. And uh, now it's just a case of using the uh, the JLC razor saw to uh, recut the panel lines that I sanded away earlier. Um, there are all kinds of tools you can get for rescribing panel lines, but I find this razor saw does the job very, very well. Um, so, yeah, it's always worked for me. I don't bother using anything else. And now we can start painting. So we're going to start with the uh, the cockpit and the inside of the engines and various other bits uh, just to um, get those hidden. So I'm going to paint the inside of the canopy, as I mentioned earlier, but I decided to uh, just do the inside of the cockpit as well, just to make sure there's nothing can show through. And then uh, doing the inside of uh, the engine. Um, you can't really see inside the engine once it's together, but it, it never hurts just to give it a, a coat of black just to make sure. And uh, these are the uh, the various internals of the engine. There's only these two bits, really. So um, they're fairly straightforward. Just give them a coat of black. And uh, as I said, the inside of the cockpit. You see, I've already masked the cockpit up in case of any overspray on the outside, basically. Um, but yeah, just give it a coat on the inside and now just uh going over the um the engine parts with some citadel chain mail it's, it's basically just like a really heavy dry brush um just because i didn't want it just plain black uh, i wanted it to look a bit more kind of futuristic and shiny so again you can't really see these once they're fitted but it never hurts to put some paint on and now we can start putting the engine together so it's very simple. I mean, the engine is basically like the two halves and then the, the front and the back. <laughs> That's all there is to it. Um, so just pop those bits in, glue them in, and then um, glue the other side on. So there really isn't anything more to it than that. So, yeah. it's uh, they The sides of the engine actually were a little bit tricky to line up. I had to do quite a lot of cleanup afterwards. Um, to clean up those seams but um, again not the end of the world very basic stuff um, so yeah that's the engine done and now we can move on to fitting <laughs> basically the rest of the plane together um, 
it's uh, it's it's say it's a very strange setup the way this thing's designed. But then again, it's such a small and simple aircraft. It's, there's not really much point of doing it any other way. I actually quite like the way they've done this. Um, the only downside really is that that seam at the back there is quite large and took a fair bit of filling, which uh, I dealt with afterwards. Um, fit the canopy, and uh, we're pretty much 90% of the way done in all fairness. So not really a lot to it. Very simple uh, little kit to put together. It's actually quite nice if you prefer just um, painting kits to building them. This is quite a good one to do because there's not much assembly required. Um, I mean, this is the tail going together. Again, it's just three pieces. Um, I quite like the, uh, the the tail on this. I like the design of it. Um, it's uh, because this uh, aircraft is designed to kind of represent a TIE fighter. Um, these tail planes like this actually work quite well because they they're kind of reminiscent of the uh, the, the solar panels or heat sinks, or whatever they are, on a on a Tie Fighter. So I quite like that nice little uh, nod towards the uh, original material, as it were. So yeah, but um, that's basically the assembly pretty much done. I'm not going to put the engine on until right till the end because uh, it'd be easier to paint the two bits separately and then put them together afterwards. And speaking of which, we shall give the whole thing a coat of uh, royal light grey to start with as our base coat. So uh, yeah, this is just um, slightly different to what I did with the uh, the Messerschmitt, the 262. Um, I'm just giving this a, a light coat of this grey first. And then what I'll do is I'll go over the panel lines and whatnot with this field blue, uh, a very thin down mix. It's uh, basically like a 20% a 20, 20 80% mix and just go over the, um, the the various panel lines and bits and pieces just to uh, create some some shadow lines. Um, this is one of the things I mentioned before on the 262 is when you're painting something in a fairly monochromatic scheme it's a good way to create some tonal variation so you don't end up with something that's just you know all one color because that's just it doesn't look realistic if you look at a real aircraft um you can see various differences in the uh in the tone and the shade of the aircraft different panels are different colors and so on and so forth even though they're all basically one color the light will hit them in different ways and, and so on and so forth so it's a case of recreating that as much as possible with the paint scheme so the first stage of that is um just darkening the panel line slightly um using a, a suitable darker color and conversely we're now going to go to our old favorite the uh, the deck tan um, and we'll use that to uh, highlight the panels and again using our, our old friend the mottling technique to um, create some again tonal variation just so that we don't end up with this you know monochromatic gray blob because that really doesn't look very good at all so once all the panel lines are done, we can go over the panels themselves um, with the deck tan, and that will give us a little bit of highlighting. And once that's done, I'm going to make a mix of this light sea grey and our royal light grey, just to give the grey a bit of a blue tint. Um, and then again, a very light coat over the whole thing, uh, just to blend everything together and kind of unify all of the colours uh, to give us the effect that we want um, and I have mentioned this before but it's worth saying again keep in mind that when this dries uh, the underlying tones will come through stronger so it might be worth putting a light coat on let it dry for a few minutes and then you'll get a good idea of what it looks like so at the moment it's looking fairly like a lot of the what I've already done just kind of disappears but once this uh, top coat has dried uh, it will become a lot more pronounced so keep that in mind when you're painting. Uh, then we'll just give everything a coat of uh, clear varnish to seal it all. Uh, very simple, uh, quick coat of that. And then we can move on to our decals. And these are some that I printed out, same as I did before with the Messerschmitt. And as usual, we use our Mr. Mark Setter and Softer to put them on. And... Um, that will give us the effect one. It's very simple with this one. I'm um, I'm only putting a couple of uh, of decals on because again, if you look at the the kind of source material, the Tie Fighter, what they actually don't have any markings at all. 
Um, so this is really just to uh, kind of recreate the, the, the German markings. Again, German aircraft didn't seem to have much in the way of markings as compared to Allied aircraft. Um, so I'm doing the similar thing here. Uh, it's pretty much just on the fuselage and the tops and undersides of the wings. So these are just going on as any decal would normally. The only thing with using these custom ones is you have to cut them out uh, quite close to the actual um, marking so that you don't get, you know, a big load of like overhang of the material. Although I have to say these uh, custom decal sheets are actually very good. I mean, they're just cheap ones from eBay, but they um, they actually work really well. They're very, very thin, but they're very strong and they uh, they go on really nicely and they conform to any like panel lines and stuff like that really well i'm 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 very pleased with the way these things work out uh it would have been nice to have done these ones in white uh but again as i mentioned before in the measure schmidt video doing them in white would be an absolute nightmare and now i'm going to try something a little bit different and that is using humbrol clear matte varnish because I've had lots of people say that they have all kinds of problems with this. And so I thought I I had some and I thought I'd give it a try and see how well it worked. And uh, so I have to say <laughs> it worked absolutely perfectly. Um, I had no problems with it at all. Uh, I just sprayed it straight out of the bottle. Um, it is a little bit thicker than the, 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 uh, the gloss. Um, but it really went on very nicely. No problems at all. So, yeah, I'm not quite sure what uh, issues people are having with this stuff. But as you can see, it's nice and flat. Uh, it's taken the shine off quite nicely. And it worked absolutely fine. So, yeah, there we go. Um, now, I'm going to unmask the, uh, the canopy and see how well we did. Um, just a case of uh, lifting up the corners and peeling off the masking tape. And uh, there's our our black uh, canopy. It actually came out looking really nice. I'm really pleased with how this came out. Um, I think it, uh, it's something that you obviously couldn't really do it with if you were doing this in a, a historical um, color scheme. But for this, I think it actually looks, um, looks quite smart. It makes the aircraft more kind of anonymous, if you like, because you can't see the pilot inside. And uh, the last step is to fit the engine. So just a bit of glue in the slot. Push the engine into place and uh, that's it done really. I mean, they're very, very simple kits to build. I mean, they really didn't take very long at all. Yeah, so if you uh, like painting stuff and not building stuff, this is the way to go. Definitely the model for you. And here are the finished articles. Um, I've got both of them together here. So you can see they've come out basically identical. Um, these were quite fun little kits to build, actually. There's a lot of cleanup involved, just some nasty seam lines and, and whatnot on them. But aside from that, they um, they go together quite well. Um, and for what I want them for, they're absolutely perfect. So if you haven't figured out by now, these are basically going to be the, uh, the TIE Fighter Escort uh, stand-ins, as it were, for our, our little diorama that we're going to be building. So these guys are going to be uh, escorting... Darth Vader's Messerschmitt 262. So uh, hopefully they should look quite good when they're all uh, together. And just as a little teaser, here they are. So uh, yeah, hopefully you've uh, enjoyed this video. It's quite a, a quick, simple one this time. Um, I'll be doing a, a little follow-up to this. But in the meantime, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers. Bye.